Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 42, verse 1. We're going through the Bible for the fourth time, and we have come as far as Jeremiah chapter 42. If you want to study the rest of the Bible with me, you can. As I mentioned, I think this is the fourth series going through the Bible. The previous three, along with this fourth series, are all archived for you at thebibleversebyverse.com. So you go there, you choose whichever series you want to study going back over 34 years. Choose the series, choose the book of the Bible, click and listen. Or begin in the beginning, in Genesis, and go all the way through Revelation. That should take you a while. It takes a long time to go verse by verse, but that's okay. The Word of God is worth it. Let's begin with prayer. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Then all the captains of the forces, and Johanan, the son of Korea, and Jezaniah, the son of Hashiath, and all the people from the least even unto the greatest, came near. And it says in verse 2, And said unto Jeremiah the prophet, Let, we beseech thee, our supplication be accepted before thee, and pray for us unto the Lord thy God, even for all this remnant. For we are left but a few of many, as thine eyes do behold us. In other words, what the people are saying is that, Jeremiah, we are in a lot of hot water here, so we want you to pray for us. We know you can get in touch with God. You know, people might not want to follow the God that you follow. They may not want to be dedicated to Jesus Christ like you are, but they will know where to go when they're in trouble, and they're not going to go to some lukewarm, modern evangelical who tries to be cool in the eyes of the world, they, they'll come to you. If they're dead serious and they're in trouble and they know they're in trouble, they'll come to you because they know deep down in the heart, in their hearts, the difference between modern lukewarm Christians who want to be cool and people like you who are truly close to God, who are different, who believe the Bible and they're not ashamed of it. And these people, they really didn't do anything wrong, but they aren't sure that Babylon will see it that way. So they want Jeremiah to pray for them. 3. That the Lord thy God may show us the way in which we may walk and the thing that, that we may do. They had not sought the will of God earlier, but they have seen all the horror that occurs when a person tries to do things their own way apart from God. As a result, they want to know what God wants. At least they say they want to know what God wants. They say they want to do the right thing. They say they want to be pleasing to God. They say they want to do what God wants them to do. That's what they say. We'll see. For then Jeremiah the prophet said unto them, I have heard you. Behold, I will pray unto the Lord your God according to your words. And it shall come to pass that whatsoever thing the Lord shall answer you, I will declare it unto you. I will keep nothing back from you. God does not promise to answer our prayers the way we would like him to. And likewise, God's faithful preachers and true faithful Bible teachers, if they are faithful, will tell the truth whether it is pleasant or not. Jeremiah promises that he will do that. He doesn't promise to tell them what they want to hear. He promises to tell them God's truth. 
Verse 5. Then they said to Jeremiah, The Lord be a true and faithful witness between us, if we do not even according to all things for which the Lord thy God shall send thee to us. And what they said was right. But they should not say what they don't mean. It is dangerous to make a rash promise to God like they did. They said they would do whatever God said, which is fine. But they really had not, not sat down and counted the cost of obedience and whether they were truly willing to obey God no matter what. Six, whether it be good or whether it be evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we send thee that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord, our God. They're right about one thing, to get God's blessing, they have to obey. God does not bless rebellion. He does not, rebe he does not bless sin. So if you want to be blessed, you got to do things God's way. They got that right. Seven. And it came to pass after ten days, that the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah. Then called he Johanan, the son of Korea, and all the captains of the forces who were with him, and all the people from the least even to the greatest. So each one will be held accountable for obeying God, so each one must hear the word of God for themselves. So Jeremiah called all of the men to talk to them personally, to give them the word of God personally. Jesus said that we're going to be judged according to his word. That's why he wants us to understand the whole counsel of God. That's why I don't lift out scriptures here and there. You know, the things that are easy to teach, the things that are pleasant to hear. That's why I've been teaching the Word of God for 34 years, the whole counsel of God, all 31,000 plus verses, Genesis through Revelation. Because we're going to be judged by the Word. And that's why it's important to use a Bible version that's based on the received text handed down from the apostles and not these modern versions. If it's not based on the received text, the King James, and yes, the New King James, and some of the minor updates, then it should not be used. They're leaving out thousands and thousands of words and many, many verses. We're going to be judged by the Word of God. You better have the Word of God. That's why Jeremiah called these people in. They need the Word of God because they're going to be held accountable for what they do with it. Jeremiah is a faithful teacher. Here we go, verse 9. And said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, unto whom he sent me to present your supplication before him. Just a reminder that Jeremiah will not be giving his opinion. Jeremiah will be declaring the word of God. Verse 10. If ye, here it is, if ye will still abide in this land, then will I build you and not pull you down, and I will plant you and not pluck you up, for I repent of the evil that I have done unto you. God is not happy <clears throat> that he had to punish his people. Consequently, he tells this remnant who said they were seeking his will that he will bless them if they stay within the borders of Israel. And remember last time we saw they were scared to death of Babylon. They were headed to Egypt to take refuge there. But God says, don't go. You stay here, I'll bless you. That's the word of God to them. 11, be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom ye are afraid. Be not afraid of him, saith the Lord, for I am with you 
to save you and to deliver you from his hand. They were afraid that the king of Babylon would blame them and kill them because of the death of Gadaliah, the man that Babylon appointed to be governor over Israel. So they're afraid. And God says, I know you're afraid, but in spite of your fear, stay here in Israel. Do what I tell you to do in spite of the fear involved in doing it. Their instinct was to run. But God's word to them was, stay and trust me. 12. And I will show mercies unto you that he may have mercy upon you and cause you to return to your own land. In other words, be where God wants you to be and do what God wants you to do and you will be blessed the best that you can be blessed. Notice verse 13. But if ye say, we will not dwell in this land, neither obey the voice of the Lord your God, saying, no, but we will go into the land of Egypt, where we shall see no war, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, nor have hunger for bread, and there will we dwell. And now, therefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye remnant of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, If ye wholly set your faces to enter into Egypt and go to sojourn there, then it shall come to pass that the sword which ye feared shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt and the famine of which ye were afraid, shall follow close after you there in Egypt. There ye shall die. So shall it be with all the men that set their faces to go into Egypt to sojourn there. They shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, and none of them shall remain or escape from the evil that I will bring upon them. If they obey God, then none of what they fear will come upon them. If they disobey God out of fear, then everything that they have feared will come upon them. It comes down to trusting the word of God or not. Everything depends on our attitude and on our faith and on our obedience to the word of God. <clears throat> 18. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, as mine anger and my fury have been poured forth upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so shall my fury be poured forth upon you when ye shall enter into Egypt, and ye shall be an execration and an horror and a curse and a reproach, and ye shall see this place no more. Jerusalem was destroyed because of their previous sin. If they sin by running off to Egypt, their fate will be worse than that of Jerusalem. 19. The Lord hath said concerning you, O ye remnant of Judah, go ye not into Egypt, know certainly that I have admonished you this day. In other words, it'd be a sin to go down in Egypt because they know that God said, don't go to Egypt. Anytime you disobey a command of God, it's a sin and it's trouble. God's warning them and he's emphasizing his command. 20. For ye dissembled in your hearts when ye sent me unto the Lord your God, saying, Pray for us unto the Lord our God, and according unto all that the Lord our God shall say, so declare unto us, and we will do it. 
<coughs> excuse me, they had already decided to run off to Egypt. They'd made their minds made up. They came to Jeremiah and asked him to pray to God. And they said, whatever the Lord will tell you, that that's what we will do. But they, they had hoped that God would say, go down to Egypt with my blessing. Because they had already determined that's what they were going to do. They were just wanting God through Jeremiah to rubber stamp their decision. 21. And now... I have this day declared it to you, but ye have not obeyed the voice of the Lord your God, nor anything for which he hath sent me unto you. They were despising God because they had made up their mind what they were going to do, and it didn't matter what God said. They were despising God with their disobedience. 22. Now therefore know certainly that ye shall die by the sword, by the famine, by the pestilence, in the place where ye desire to go and to sojourn. They have chosen a life of sin. They have chosen a life of continued disobedience. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. And they're not going to get away with it. They will die in their sin down in Egypt, just as God said. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You say, but I prayed the sinner's prayer. I prayed the sinner's prayer. My pastor tells me, and all these preachers that I listen to on the radio tell me that I can't lose it. You live in sin? Yes, I'm a carnal Christian. I really don't care about what God says. I live in sin. But my pastor tells still tells me that, that, that I'm saved and I'll never lose it. Mister, your pastor is lying to you. Either that or he's a fool. And those preachers that are you listening, that you're listening to on radio, television, they're lying to you too, or they're also fools. Because what they're telling you doesn't line up with scripture. God is not mocked. And a real Christian does care about what God wants. And yes, real Christians still sin, but they're not comfortable in it. And they're not content being a so-called carnal Christian, which is a misnomer if there ever was one. Well, I'm going to stop there. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry and help me get out God's word, that'd be wonderful. You can do it. Stand with me. Let's get out the word of God, the pure word of God, the whole counsel of God. Let's do it, and we can do it together. Pray for me, would you? I need your prayers. Pray for the Word of God. And also, when you take a break from studying at the thebibleversebyverse.com, if you would, click the Donate button at the top of the front page and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. I'll see you next time.